Agia, The Wrath of God is the second Werner Herzog film that I've seen after Bad Lieutenant 2, Port of Call, New Orleans, which is not a brilliant film, but one that I enjoy vastly, mainly due to some of the crazy shit in it, largely done by wonderful, iconic, notorious actor Nicolas Cage. Now, I've been wanting to see Agia for a while, and I think that's how I'm pronouncing it, Agia. The actual dub of the film is in German, though it was recorded in English, apparently, so I don't know. I'm not great with foreign languages, and I'm probably going to offend just about everyone with my pronunciation. The crazy thing about this is that I knew nothing about this film, but I've been hearing very, very wonderful things about it from everyone. It's a very cult film, apparently, and one loved by many people that I talk to about film. What I didn't know is that it largely influenced the creation of of Apocalypse Now by Francis Ford Coppola in 1979, and as you can see, the 100 score indicates that Apocalypse Now is one of my favorite films, probably in my top 10. It was my number one for several years, and then it got dropped down when I saw some other better films. So A Gear the Wrath of God follows a group of Spanish conquistadors trying to find the City of Gold, El Dorado. And through this journey, the lead actor Kinski, who is apparently a very, very famous German actor known for his temper, and he really does bring that out in this role. He is absolutely menacing, fantastically wonderful, has a great stage presence. Agir takes the lead of the small group eventually after they kind of break off from this main group, and he slowly kind of whittles them down through his control of the group. He's very manipulative, and eventually it all ends out horribly, kind of like Apocalypse Now. Follows very, very similar format. It's essentially the group traveling down a large river on a small boat, and then one by one they're kind of picked off eventually, and shit happens and whatnot, and everyone kind of gets worse and worse and worse as they go along. Straight off the bat, this film has a really weird vibe to it. And as I said, I didn't know any of the production side of this. As soon as I went into it, I was actually wondering if it was a kind of quasi-documentary, like a remake documentary, because a lot of it is shot in like a cinema verite style of shaky cam and kind of observational cinema sort of thing, where it's like you're part of the scene and there's lots of movement behind people's heads and kind of shots behind objects and that sort of thing, which is generally a technique that's used in documentary filmmaking to kind of give realism to a scene or kind of make the viewer feel more in the scene. The main reason for that apparently was because a a lot of the shots of the film were impromptu and just shot spontaneously and a lot of it was just made up on the spot and improvised. Sometimes that could be terrible and it did put me off a little bit at the start of the film because I wasn't really expecting that. I kind of went in thinking it was going to be a very very standard narrative based film and then it just kind of goes into this weird sequence of shots and a lot of the acting is very kind of abrupt and awkward and I'm like uh... It's just a bit weird, a bit confronting, but it actually does really work very, very well for the style of the film in the same sense that it kind of worked for Apocalypse Now where some of that was improvised, where people would have genuine reactions to things where something would, you know, explode in the distance and the actual actor would be reacting to the event rather than the character reacting to the event. And there are definitely some shots where you can kind of tell the actors didn't know they were being shot. Specifically, some kind of weird fourth wall breaking shots. There's a few where characters will just be sitting around on this raft, which apparently they actually live on the actual actors lived on this raft during the production because they had no budget budget for this was like 350,000 US in 1972 which would have been a little bit more if you count for inflation but there are some shots where the actors are just kind of lying around on this boat and Werner Herzog is shooting them and they just kind of look straight up at the camera and look at him and that's the shot and that's that's pretty weird it's okay but it's it's a little bit weird. Yeah, the documentary style actually works pretty well for it. And that's not to say that the entire film is like that. Some of the cinematography in this is just absolutely beautiful. And you can really see the inspiration that Francis Ford Coppola had in Apocalypse Now because there are some shots that are pretty much directly copied from them. I mean, in the first like five minutes, I was getting a really strong Apocalypse Now vibe and a kind of Heart of Darkness vibe, mainly because for one, the entire thing is shot kind of on a river, very, very dense jungle, has a similar tone of insanity and people slowly crumbling and becoming more depraved. There's not really any curts at the end. It's kind of like Apocalypse Now if Kurtz was the main character and just fucking with everyone the entire time. And it's funny because one of the earliest scenes in the film is these characters going down on a raft on a river and they tow their raft onto the side of the bank and then later in the morning it's gone because the river's flooded. The next plot point is that they're just rebuilding the raft. I thought that felt really weird because this is right at the beginning of the film they kind of established okay we're conquistadors, we're setting out for El Dorado etc etc you know exposition basic exposition and then they're suddenly doing this weird very pointless subplot about constructing a raft and I hypothesized 
and it turns out to be correct, that the actual raft in the production was destroyed by just floating off on the river and that they actually had to rebuild another one. And it was actually the crew rebuilding the raft that they made. So a lot of it is very much set in realism to the point where a lot of the actors are doing the stunts in the film, like going down this really, really rough river. And that's, I mean, that's the best way to get realism, just get the actual actors to do it. Just in the general production side of things, even though the film's really low budget, a lot of the costumes are actually really, really solid. They're very like like worn in and very realistic. The worst thing you can have for a period piece is if the costumes just look like someone has made them just for a film, but a lot of these feel very, very real. It's a really good sense of realism, and the film really does feel like set in the 15th century, which sounds like a weird compliment for a film that's set in the 15th century, but often with very, very low budget period pieces, you're going to have really shit costumes, or you're going to have to cut down in some department. But I'm pretty sure they probably got around this by A, getting tax breaks for shooting in the Peruvian jungle, and B, pretty much the costumes are the only expensive thing they would have had to pay for, besides Kinski's paycheck, the main actor who plays Agia. And apparently his paycheck took up a third of the production's budget. I think I briefly mentioned the cinematography, but I just kind of want to go back to that. It's actually really pretty amazing and kind of absurdist in parts. There are a few absurdist moments outside of that which are quite funny but some really interesting framing particularly this shot I'll play here I really like the distinction between the horse on the left side of the frame and the new emperor of El Dorado sitting very very still on the right hand side of the frame it's a really really nice split between the two that just creates this really strange image there are a few other really good shots in this particularly ones which involve Wes Anderson-esque framing where the frame almost has this real simplicity to it where there are just a few sparse objects in the frame Overall, the cinematography was absolutely fantastic, and I actually didn't expect it to be. For the connection to Apocalypse Now, a lot of that really comes from the setting, like for a few of the shots where the boat is traveling on the water and the raft is traveling on the water. Overall, the film isn't shot like Apocalypse Now really at all. Like Apocalypse Now relies on a lot of that imagery, but the way it's shot is generally kind of like as this big epic, you know, the 70 millimeter epic, hence the Flight of the Valkyries scene and kind of these huge explosions and just massive scale to the film. Despite Agia being very, very, very similar to Apocalypse Now, it's on a totally different scale. I mean, for one, the production was almost the exact opposite of Apocalypse Now, where the budget was so low that apparently Werner Herzog actually had to sell his shoes and his watch at one point to pay for food for the crew, which seems absolutely absurd. And top of the fact that Kinski, the actor who played Agia, actually shot one of the extra's fingers off at one point because he got angry at him. A similarly turbulent production to Apocalypse Now, but one that was on a very, very different scale. Of course, Apocalypse Now's production is infamously insane and there was so much excess and Marlon Brando being fat and Martin Sheen having a heart attack footage wasted it was kind of this great excess while on the other hand a gear is the exact opposite as I mentioned absurdity is really kind of this interesting part in the film that kind of comes out a bit later towards the third act where everyone on the raft is starving a gear has kind of fully taken over as this autocratic kind of dictator almost on the raft he's very forceful with everyone the whole film and kind of manipulative duplicitous but it really comes out in the third act where everyone on the crew is starving and he's still berating them to stand on guard watch while they're just being slowly picked off and there's this really fantastic part where one of the characters hallucinates or perhaps doesn't hallucinate a boat just sitting in a tree and I'm thinking okay small budget he's gonna be talking about this and you see him going oh my god there's a boat in this tree then they actually show it and they actually lifted you know a full yacht essentially into a tree in the rainforest that was very surprising. Just fantastic, wonderfully surreal. There are a few other absurdist moments. One is where a character gets shot by an arrow and then looks down and notes, ah yes, it looks like long arrows are back in fashion, and then proceeds to die. It's a little bit tonally jarring, but the rest of the film is kind of subtly weird, especially with the cinematography. There are some really great shots where it'll just have a very, very sparse placement of people, really good framing in that respect, but objects in one place, objects in another place, and just beautiful spacing in the frame in a kind of weirdly simplistic way. And simplicity is not a negative in this regard. It just creates this kind of interesting aesthetic to the way some things look. Even the basic dialogue scenes aren't ever really shot in a shot over the shoulder 
shoulder shot manner. They're all shot in an interesting way, regardless of what the scene is, which is just wonderful, wonderful to see, especially for something low budget. And apparently Werner Herzog actually doesn't use storyboards for his films, any of his films, any storyboards at all, which I find completely absurd because apparently this film was also written in two and a half days and obviously with a budget that small and with actors kind of that crazy I actually don't know how this turned out as well as it did. You could say the same thing for Apocalypse Now I suppose but Apocalypse Now is kind of the opposite where they had a little bit too much money and everyone kind of went a bit crazy shooting a little bit too long in the jungle and all those shenanigans. Overall I actually really enjoyed this probably more so than I thought I would. I've always heard good things about Werner Herzog and after Bad Lieutenant I was thinking uh, I don't know but I heard that was one of his kind of stranger films. That's not to say this film isn't with flaws. Some of the pacing is very very slow. As I was mentioning in the beginning the whole rebuilding the raft section that was actually just a reflection of real life is pretty dull and it does take a little while to get into its groove but it's absolutely mesmerizing once it gets in. The soundtrack to this film should also be credited as with many many good films these films have very good soundtracks and apparently this was done by a German electronic prog band and they create this really interesting kind of mystical soundscape that really really complements the jungle atmosphere in the film. The ending is a little anticlimactic. It's interesting visually uh, as it involves a lot of monkeys but I'm not exactly sure on the meaning of them being there or it's just a kind of random thing. I understand where the ending's coming from from a character perspective. It's a gear, he's all alone on this raft and he's kind of screaming out that he is the wrath of God and he'll have incestuous relationships with his daughter and create a pure noble bloodline and then he dies presumably and the film ends. Which is a totally fine end because that kind of fits the trend of decay in every way and everyone's dying and it's all going to shit. Didn't really understand the purpose or meaning of the monkeys. They seemed kind of like the iguanas that show up in Bad Lieutenant, though probably not as strange. The iguanas in Bad Lieutenant are very, very weird and I just have no idea why they're there. I spend long nights awake thinking about what on earth they mean. Overall, I'm giving this film a 93 out of 100. It really exceeded my expectations, pretty much. And it just didn't get into the 95 category solely because it had some relatively large flaws, but by and large, the amazing cinematography, amazing acting, good soundtrack, general good writing and atmosphere of the film really, really pick this up. A lot stronger than many other low-budget films that I've seen. It really should be commended on being a low-budget film with a really, really tumultuous production. So that's it. Maybe I'll do more Werner Herzog films in the future. I've heard Nosferatu is good. I've also heard that Fitzcarraldo was good. So yeah, maybe I'll do those ones in the future. And that's it. Have a lovely day. God bless.